Hi guys, my name is Opabi. And I'm Isaac. Welcome to the FK's podcast. And in today's podcast, we'll be talking about digitization of African cultural heritage for open access. People are not aware that open culture is possible. So we'll be making emphasis on how open culture can be possible. So first off, what's digitization? So digitization is the process of creating digital formats or physical or analog material through the use of scanners, um, digital cameras and recorders. So what do you think digitization is? Uh, I very much agree with what Phil said. You know, digitization has come with digital age. It basically means that putting stuff, content and formats that are digitally accessible. This could be in form of documents, videos, pictures. Yeah. And not just like, you know, there's the concept of hard copy of yeah. the real stuff. But digital is like abstract. You know, when you say things like the cloud, things you can't feel, feel. but you can see. You get me? So, <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I feel like that's what digitization is like, basically. So. Okay, so like in context, I think that digitization of African cultural heritage is no digitizing things that pertain to you know our culture mm. you know like i like to start you know yeah so what's, what is it about african cultural heritage like what I, is it um like i think like our traditions you know um poems our museums i guess like our, our artifacts food, our, our food. songs our yeah, for instance the bimi you know artworks, artworks and yeah. all of that so yeah. i think digitization makes it easier like it makes it more accessible to to a wider range of people i don't have to go to Benin now to see the artifacts or the artworks that dances. exactly you know i can just go online and be able to like that's what digitization makes it makes it possible for us for for us to do that right? yes for us to do that <laughs> exactly yeah, but then when we consider the context of open access it means that we want people to like be able to see it easily, like without with as little restrictions yeah. as possible, and uh, probably without paying, without putting it behind a paywall, without restricting, maybe making it open based on membership or stuff. Like yeah. making it available easily online. Yeah, boundaries like location, opening hours, and mm-hmm. like. So I, I I saw somewhere that only five percent, a research was done in twenty sixteen, and only five percent of um of collections have been displayed in the museum wow i was really amazed that okay so i finally get to the museum i think it was on some masterpieces actually and then just five percent are in the world not in the whole world i don't know where the research was done but then it was a research was done in 2016 or some masterpieces and only five percent is being displayed in the museum so like you finally get to the museum while you only get to see five percent what was it mean masterpiece? But I my ignorance, like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You should you should ask Google. Oh, Ouch. Yeah, I'm sorry. It. <laughs> so I feel like to digitize um our cultural heritage in Nigeria or in Africa to a larger extent, um we really need to go through the nuances of identifying it at first. Yeah. Like what do we want to digitize? Yeah. We have our cultural parades year in, year out, coronation ceremonies. Yeah rituals but then you know there's also the part in africa whereby we don't want this thing to be known or to be seen by everyone because yeah, i think it takes that's away one of the, the challenges it takes away the old um sacred part of it yes away. exactly like it takes it away we don't know what they do but we all believe that if you go out at a certain time yeah. this is happening this might happen to you this might not happen to you so there's that part where we might not be able to do now but the ones we are able to do like let's say the New Year Festival where mm-hmm. people are dancing, we can capture it. The attire, the drums, the all that we can take pictures of it and have it online. We can yeah. write stories about okay. it. It doesn't have to be pictures alone. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the replica alone. It can be stories about it. People even understanding what this means, what it signifies, the type of clothes, why the amulet is on the right arm, what yeah. it signifies. You know, we see stuff like the um not mythology where we have talk holding and the likes i mean that's some form of yeah. stuff that i think i think um i picked something that i said um africans do not want um 
these things out because they, we think that it's sacred. So I think that leads us to one of the challenges of digitization. Yeah. You know, um, it's might. I think they think that it's conflicts with their traditional views. You know, um, okay, do, you, you cannot digitize these because it might not be as sacred as you know we it take it. With exactly you know when they say and uh, when jesus died the veil was torn and the temple was open the point, yeah. and anybody could enter yeah. and all and all that so <laughs> when these things happen mm. so it takes away the and i think that's what i don't know i might be wrong I might be wrong that takes away the sacredness the old power the old respect ascribed to some of our cultural practices i mean we should still respect our cultural practices it doesn't mean we should start trivializing it or not giving in due respect because it's our culture it's our heritage mm-hmm. i mean it's what so so are you saying that we should not digitize african cultural heritage because of the sacredness no, we to take you, you know we are just identifying some of yeah. the possible challenges. hindrances and challenges to do that i remember last year we yeah. africa went to play two states i uh, went to um, a cultural heritage site of Plato State, um, we have tagged what we call Okay. I think Golum Village. Right. Yeah. So we went there and they took us on a tour actually. The villagers, the people there, the chief priest, we went to the chief priest, the oh. community elders. They were open, they were welcoming. Oh. And they told us about their story, they told us about a mysterious spot called the Ibishi, which is kept on the top of the hill. That no matter the type of rain that falls, water cannot fall into it. Wow. Um, what else were we told? We were told that only a person appointed by the chief priest could climb the mountain. Wow. And then they showed us another cave where people used to hide during the wars, in the tribal mm. wars back in the days. We saw a lot of things. We were really open. Yeah. We took some pictures. We, and we documented some of these things on our website in a video. Mm. They were open. So I feel it's. It's more of the community and more of the how open they are to yeah. people documenting this thing, to putting their stories out there. They told us things that are as far back as thousands of years that they have been there. Wow. So yeah, so it depends on how. So you know what's been in my head? Like, okay, if these things were actually digitized, I'll not be saying wow, because I would probably have <laughs> read about it yeah, or like seen pictures about this. Another major challenge that I know that um is the cost of digitization oh, yeah. yeah so i i read somewhere that um a, an institution was trying to digitize music records and they already digitized over twenty thousand records wow. and they had to stop like it had to come to, to a halt because of the costs like you know for institutions we um it's just like free knowledge africa we have to depend or Oh, yeah, yeah. Donations. for for donations on donations and fundings for us to drive and sometimes it's a one time you no know, a one off project a one off funding sorry a one off funding and it's not a continuous train exactly course. because you have to maintain all well, the sites you are using you know there are certain things you have to like use to maintain or even start the whole process so I feel like um the cost of digitization is another major challenge what do you think about that well i feel like yes you are very correct um cost is a major thing like in getting things done anything yeah. any project so and digitization is not an easy thing to do you need manpower you need equipment you need resources you need software you need licenses you need technique you need the technical understanding of how to do it properly yeah you need to have like various software yeah all of that you yeah. need storage yeah you need storage on the cloud or on premises, you need storage, and storage is not cheap. So, but I think, like, how can we address this problem of cost? Yeah. We can decide to partners, to do partnership, go the route of partnership. There are institutions or organizations, businesses that have some of these devices, this equipment we yeah. carry as a We could partner with them, we could also ask for more volunteers, we could make it a form of a challenge. Like maybe it's a particular ethnic group or a region, a village. You could ask people through the internet, through social media. Oh, can you volunteer to help us do this? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell the story of this, this, yeah. this, this. Can you volunteer? Can you us take a picture? Take a picture of a of a of an upstairs or a duplex. It depends on the, what the context is. But we can try that route. We can try that approach. Okay. Then also we can also decide to cut costs on things that are not necessary. Actually, like. we can go very link with the budget we, instead of getting scanners. Yeah. 
which standards renting or purchasing we can decide to use um data cameras yeah cameras though it may be more stressful but let's say we have volunteers we can do that at a faster rate mm. and scan and document them depends on the scale of the project i mean if we are doing hundreds of thousands of records or pictures, pictures of what yeah. it's we just have to try to get as much money as possible and i believe partnerships play very key mm. and then doing things gradually letting people know the success story i believe people will be more interested and willing to support some of these initiatives yeah. and also to to um consolidate on what you said i believe that a whole lot of works are lying in archives and libraries yeah. about Which cultural heritage that digital are not true. digitized yet yeah. and are wasting away that mm. we don't even know about so i think another thing we could do is to try some of these existing institutions of knowledge that house some of these things yeah. like you know the libraries yeah. and a lot of people don't even go to libraries again anymore yeah right and in Nigeria, if you even go to some libraries you won't find a single book that is that serious and let it, us not mention <laughs> names <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guess and then in some places there are invaluable knowledge just lying on the, the shelves, shelves yeah. wasting away that some people would find interesting yeah. and you know content is the thing now yeah, true. Media. Content is king now. Yeah. And you just when you say cash is king, content is king. Yeah, true. So I think we can start these things one step at a time. I know some people have their own private libraries that they are starting, oh. some public libraries. You can actually reach out and start from there. And even the ones that are already out there that have been documented, let's digitize it. The ones yeah. that are still sacred, maybe with time. Yeah, with open the times. Up, yeah. yeah. We time, communities will open up. Yeah, yeah, there was a time people were not going to school. They believe it was wrong. Why yeah. would you go to school? Let's go to the farm and all of that. So things change with the time. So it's a gradual process. We can't rush the process. Or we can at least try to, you know, start one step at a time and build our successes upon each other, laying blocks upon blocks. Yeah. So, so there's there's something you you said about, you know, works or books just lying there like that in archives or libraries. So like benefits of digitization wow. so like that's one of the benefits like okay books will no longer be lying on shelves and nobody's reading them if, if, I, if we digitize those books you know it gives a wider range of coverage yeah, i don't have to examine more visibility what are the benefits apart from visibility do you think um digitization okay yeah so visibility is the one of the benefits major, one of the major benefits yeah. like over the internet it's reaches the whole world, world. Yeah, like, yeah the whole world can reach it yeah and it can reach the whole world. Yeah. so another one is that closely related to that is knowledge dissemination that knowledge yeah. will not die it's like, true it will not waste away true. it will come out to the open and go out and you know some people believe that there are a lot of things in african medicine mm-hmm. that might be useful to the world yeah but because of this sacred stuff let's keep it open let's keep it close mm. it stays there and then the people die or their yeah, children and don't continue to practice and it's forgotten yeah. so yeah i believe that's another benefit knowledge dissemination it gives benefits to the custodians of the work or where the work originated from but of course if it's knowledge and it's useful people will come and visit either for tourism either for business purposes and yeah i believe knowledge dissemination is also very key okay that. so i think lastly um we'll talk about bridging the digital car because um for me i think the the major way to bridge the digital gap is creating awareness which is one of the foremost thing like every Af- knowledge africa is trying to do yeah. you know creates awareness about these things there are a lot of people that you know they do not know about okay that if they digitize this thing it's going to last for generations a lot of people do not know this knowledge so i feel like um the major way to, to bridge start. yeah start digital gap is awareness what okay. do you think yeah i agree before you do anything you need to know if you don't know you can't do there is no to worry about it no matter what you don't know so you can't do so that awareness that awareness that this thing is possible, possible. this thing can lead to this result yeah open culture is possible yeah open culture is possible yeah. like opening up our culture and celebrating it and sharing it to the world is it's very much possible, but raising awareness is awareness about the benefits. Mm-hmm. You know, we all want to gain something, something in return. Yeah. That's the intrinsic nature of, of human. Man. So of man. So we want to know what we want to gain. If we are not gaining anything, why are we doing it? So I think we need to do that more. And yeah, a lot of economic potentials lie there in opening up these things and sharing to the world. 
because some of the things we even have today in this part of the world is what that part of what's sharing with us what they've developed from their culture from their medicine from their science from their history from their art music movies mm. it's actually sharing of these things yeah. i'm not keeping it closely mm-hmm. guarded like yeah i believe that's the way to go so i believe awareness is the way to i believe to the awareness yeah. is the way to start and then after awareness follow up with action mm. action partnership to get stuff yeah. done and then gain traction that's what i believe oh. yeah it was it's it's actually it's it actually be a game changer i mean our culture i know right a lot of gems yeah hidden gems i don't even know of yet evenly will collaborate with each other and so and now these things that oh, we do have this kind of things yeah. here in africa we have a lot of gems and that's yeah. what one of the things we are trying to do i know africa are trying to contribute africa's um token to global knowledge what we have in africa yeah. the knowledge we have yeah we are trying to contribute it to global mm-hmm. knowledge and yeah Thank you. It was nice having this podcast. So I'm having this. Yeah, it was very conversational. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Please rate it from one to ten. Yeah, share with your friends, share with families. <laughs> <laughs> like, share, and, and subscribe. And subscribe. Bye. Instead, you should look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs>